by sheer coincidence, I broke down in the middle of Kent in my car. Uh, it's a long story, but basically the guy, a guy got out of a car the other side of the road, started taking pictures of me. He was um, Paul McMullen, this ex-News of the World features editor. And uh, I was swearing at him, etc. And anyway, I finally got talking to him and he started boasting about how my phone had been hacked and all the, the dirtiest tactics of the, of the News of the World and about um, their relationship with the police and about their relationship with uh, five successive prime ministers. Uh, and uh, I was revolted and astonished. And then I went back a few months later to the pub he now runs in Dover and pretended to be dropping in for a pint. Uh, and I bugged him. Uh, it seemed like symmetry. And I got him talking again about all these things, and I published them all in the New Statesman. And, and what, one, did, what, one, what, one did, what did he, he uh, what, what did he admit? Well, uh, to all the things I've just said that uh, you know how extensive and what, and what an industrial scale phone hacking went on on uh, the, the news of the world, particularly under Andy Coulson, how that it wasn't just the news of the world; it was all the tabloids, and uh, how uh, money regularly passed hands between News International and um, and officers at the Metropolitan Police how uh, Margaret Thatcher was the first Prime Minister to realise that it's very hard to get elected in this country without the backing of the Murdoch press. So she was the first one to become an undignified sycophant to that organisation, to that uh, media tycoon, uh, a pattern that's been followed by every single Prime Minister since, including this one. And, and, and he did, when I asked him, because I'd heard a rumour, I said, and do you think the news of the world hacked the phones of the family and friends of the little girls murdered at Soham, he said, yes, I think that almost certainly happened. Just stay with us, Hugh, will you, because Paul McMullen's sitting alongside us now. Uh, do you agree with that version of events? Uh, yeah, pretty well, except uh, just one final thing. Uh, two pints of Spitfire cost uh, six quid. You owe me six quid. He didn't pay for his beer. <laughs> Apart from that, it was fine. Uh, he sounds like you got on quite well, but how did it feel yeah. being turned over by somebody who um, perhaps your paper had been chasing and trying to turn over uh, for some time? Well, I, I, it was hilarious. I mean, how can Hugh Grant coming in your pub with a silly little pen trying to record you be anything other than hilarious? So uh, I, did, I didn't mind being turned over. I suspect he was doing it, although I couldn't believe it. You can't believe that uh, uh, an actor who's very well known would uh, lower himself to such tactics. I was shocked and outraged. No, uh, I wasn't at all. Uh, was and, and, and Hugh, when you wrote that piece for the uh, New Statesman, I mean, you have appeared a lot, of course, in the tabloid press. You have been targeted uh, for things that you've, you've been caught out. Uh, has this become something of a crusade for you? And do you find that perhaps uh, that there is public interest in some of the things that have been written about you, or do you dismiss that completely? Well, there's certainly interest, uh, but, you know, it's back to that old cliche of what's interesting to the public and what's in the public interest. And I would argue a lot of it, probably all of it, is interesting to the public. They're very good at that, but almost none of it is... Um, in the public interest. I've got to say, um, very few people in Dover who've come in afterwards who, you know, work eight hours a day on building sites and take home 220 quid a week uh, have very little sympathy of someone who gets five million quid a film uh, bleating on, oh, someone listened to one of my messages once. There's hardly a man or woman possibly in the country who would not swap places and tolerate the well, I mean, you said it was evil yesterday on Radio 5 Live. It's not really evil. It's all part of the game that helps you win you publicity think, for your latest think, movies. Do you, think the, do you think the families and friends of Millie Dowler and of the Soham uh, girls think that it's a game, think it's funny? No. Um, do you think they're earning £5 million pounds a film? No, indeed. That's why uh, you got no sympathy at all from the people of Dover. And now, unfortunately, because of that mistake, and that it was a mistake, by someone who was not a staff member. You're saying, you're saying it was a one-off instead of a widespread practice. It was oh, clearly no, a widespread no, practice. No, clear, clearly you guys had no morals, no scruples at all. You, I, don't, I, you didn't care who got hurt as so long as you were able to sell your newspaper for a lot of money. Your only motive was profit. You're not um, journalists. You have no interest in journalism. Uh, it's, it's just money, money, all. money. Our interest was writing truthful stories and what better source About of the Jordan. truth that you can find on someone's own mobile. Jordan or some footballer. No, you should try real journalism because you're not an idiot, Paul. You, you could probably do it.